Welcome to Movie Speeching. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take good care. Code 8 Part 1 Code 8 Part 2 is the name of the movie. Please like and subscribe to get every update. In the early 21st century, on an alternate Earth, it was discovered that 4% of the population had special abilities. The government calls them power and requires them to register the ability to monitor them. At first, they were very popular among workers, but after the Third Industrial Revolution, all power became impoverished and suppressed by the police. Soon, a criminal organization begins illegally selling a stick known as the Psyche, made from the spinal fluid of the traffic powers. In response, police began using giant drones and special robots called Guardians to hunt them down. A powerful man named Named Connor has the ability to wield electricity and uses it to perform temporary construction jobs while searching for something more permanent. Immediately after getting a job at a construction site, the police came to make sure no force was used. All the workers were lined up and asked to look up at the sky so the drone could scan them, allowing them to figure out which workers had powers. Police asked Powers to leave and obtained a license before discovering there was an arrest warrant for one of the men. The police tried to arrest him, so the man shot them in an attempt to escape. Just then, the drone drops a few guardians, who immediately killed the guy. Meanwhile, another team of police raided the apartment of a man in a car. When a guardian broke down the door, the man used his super strength to throw a disc at him, breaking his neck. The man then tried to escape through the window, but Officer Park entered and stopped him at gunpoint. Police then searched the apartment and discovered a room full of stressed people whose spinal fluid was being drained. There are also multiple bags of psych, linking the case to a crime boss named Marcus. Later, Connor visits his mother Mary at the grocery store where she works. Mary has a brain tumor, which sometimes causes her to lose control of her temperature. She accidentally breaks a bottle of sauce and her boss screams at her, causing Connor to rush to her defense and almost use her powers. The boss immediately kicked them both out of his store. Later at home, Connor tells Mary to start chemotherapy, but Mary reminds him that they can't afford it. The next day, Connor sees a Lincoln power truck and his friends warn him that they are part of Marcus's gang. However, Connor was in desperate need of money, so when driver Garrett offered him a job as an electrician, Connor accepted. He is then taken to a chemical plant, where Garrett tells him to turn off the electric fence. Connor first tries using bolt cutters, but gets electrocuted, so he then uses his powers to overload the fence. Maddie then melts the lock with her fire, and the group finally enters. They began loading barrels of chemicals onto the truck, but were quickly found by a security guard who tried to call for backup. Using his telekinetic powers, Garrett removed the radio, forcing the guard to surrender and swear he saw nothing. Unfortunately, as the group left, the police were still alerted and every patrol officer was told to look for the red truck. Garrett stops the vehicle under a bridge and the group removes the red cloth covering it, so it is now white. When the police drone finds them, it quickly removes them because they are the wrong color. Next, they go to a parking garage, where Rhino takes them through a secret passage to a club. Crime Lord Marcus is punished by Wesley for not paying recently. When Marcus tries to explain, Wesley tells him to read his partner Copperhead's mind so he can see all the ways Copperhead knows how to kill someone. Wesley then gives Marcus a week to pay and leave. Garrett then introduces Connor to Marcus, who reads Connor's mind and agrees that he should join their team. While Nia shows Connor around, Marcus informs Garrett that he cannot pay for the chemicals because he has to pay Wesley first and asks about Connor's powers, but Garrett argues that Connor still needs training a little bit. Marcus asks him to prepare for their next job. Meanwhile, Agents Park and Davis investigate the theft and realize that the chemicals were stolen to dilute Marcus's psyche. They may know that electrical and fire powers were used on the door, so they will need to search the list of people with these abilities. The next day, Connor chose Garrett again for the construction job. To test Connor's abilities, Garrett asks him to short-circuit a car alarm, which he activates by hitting it with his fist. Connor focuses and uses his powers to extinguish it, then Garrett announces that it's time to practice. They started with a simple exercise. Connor had to turn on a light bulb. Due to lack of control, Connor broke him so he had to keep practicing and breaking the blisters until he succeeded. As the days pass, Connor is assigned certain tasks, such as collecting money from drug dealers by using his powers to scare them away or force them to pay. He continued to practice in his free time and eventually managed to light several light bulbs at once. When a drug dealer tried to defend himself with his electronic bodyguard, Connor was able to endure the shock without pain and quickly took him out. Feeling confident, Connor decides to visit his mother's boss and threaten him to treat Mary better. He then returns home and informs Mary that he has finally found a permanent job. Outside, Park and Davis track Connor, putting him on the suspect list. The next day, Connor and Garrett go to a bank to gather information about security cameras and procedures, concluding that they will have five minutes to pull off the heist because the police drone will arrive in seven. Another minute. Meanwhile, Mary goes to work and is shocked by her boss's kindness towards her. Sometime later, Garrett's gang breaks into the bank, taking out all the guards before holding everyone present hostage at gunpoint. Connor immediately ran to the safe and turned off the power so the bank could not remotely lock it. The alarm went off when they asked an employee to 
to open the safe manually, but discovered that most of the money was gone. The group grabbed what was left and ran outside, where the drones were waiting along with a few guardians. Connor quickly attacks them with his powers and knocks them to the ground, allowing them to easily escape. The group then went to see Marcus, who was unhappy to learn that they couldn't get all the money. As he and Garrett argued, Copperhead suddenly appeared and tried to shoot Marcus, but Rhino blocked the bullet with his extremely sturdy body. Copperhead tries to shoot Nia instead, so Connor disarms her with a taser shot. Copperhead then attacked her with a knife and injured her arm so Rhino shot her repeatedly until she died. Later, Connor finds Nia while she is consuming Psyche. She noticed Connor was injured in the fight and immediately healed him while explaining that she continued working for Marcus because she owed him. Later, when Connor gets home, Mary asks Connor about the money he hid in a drawer, confessing that she called the place where Connor said he worked but they didn't find out and had never heard of him. We are there. Connor tries to explain that he chose evil for her, but suddenly Mary loses control of her powers and collapses. She was immediately taken to the hospital and the doctor informed Connor that her tumor was pressing her brain against her skull, but Connor could not afford the necessary surgery. When Connor left the hospital, Park and Davis waited for him to take him to the police station. Connor denies being involved in any crime, so the police remind him that Marcus is a very vicious criminal and mention that they will soon burn Sykes $4 million. Park points out that they can help Connor treat Mary if he shares information about Marcus, but Davis interrupts to provoke Connor by insulting his father. Angry, Connor insists they have the wrong man and the police have no choice but to let him go because they don't have enough evidence. Garrett picks up Connor and takes him to Marcus, who reads Connor's mind to confirm that he did not report him to the police. Connor then mentions all the Sykes that the police will take to the incineration site, asking for a deal. He helps him get the Sykes back and in return Marcus will hand over Nia to him. Garrett also asks to be partners instead of crew, and Marcus accepts. Sometime later, this gang prepared a plan by erecting a series of roadblocks. Soon, the armored vehicle appears followed by the drone, who will have to turn back when they reach the no-fly zone. The roadblock forces the truck to take a different route, so Maddie and Freddy follow it in their car while Garrett drives a garbage truck to block it. As the driver screams at him and Garrett tries his best to stop, Connor rushes forward and blasts the truck with a powerful blast of electricity that knocks the Guardians over. Garrett then uses his telekinesis to hold the Guardians back so Connor can short-circuit them. Freddy and Maddie soon join them and help them neutralize the Guardians until there are no robots left standing. Maddie then burns a hole in the truck and Freddy releases tear gas inside to force the police out. The car no longer responded. The drone decided to enter a no-fly zone. Maddie takes Sykes' suitcases and hands them to Rhino, whose men begin shooting at the guards. Rhino also shoots Maddie before he and his accomplices turn to shoot the others, and Garrett has to teleport Freddy to save him. Rhino then leaves with Sykes, leaving two men to kill Garrett's group. At that point, more guards arrive and the gangsters have to defend themselves, allowing Garrett, Freddy, and Connor to escape. Normal bullets cannot harm the guardians, who will kill Rhino's men in seconds. As the trio was running, Freddy was hit by a stray bullet and Garrett had to carry him to the car. Unfortunately, Freddy does not survive, and when they escape, Connor blames Garrett for everything, saying that Marcus betrayed them because Garrett asked for too much. Meanwhile, Rhino takes Psyche to see Marcus, who says he cannot let Nia go because her father still owes him money. Later, Connor visits his mother and promises her that he will help her with treatment, but Mary thinks it is time for him to let go. Later, Connor meets Park at a restaurant to ask for a deal, promising to turn himself in but wants the police to arrest Marcus first. At the bar, Marcus started coughing quite hard and asked Nia to treat him. Suddenly, Suddenly, the police cut off the power to the bar and burst in, shooting at them, so Marcus, Nia, and Rhino escaped through the passageway that led them to the garage. However, Garrett is waiting for them and shoots Marcus in the chest. Rhino immediately fought back, but Garrett disarmed him with telekinesis before opening fire on him. Unfortunately, Garrett's bullets have no effect and Rhino begins to rush after him, so Garrett uses his powers to slow him down. At that moment, Connor arrived and electrocuted Rhino. Rhino grabs Connor and slams him against the table. Connor retaliates by using as much electric charge on him as possible, but unfortunately his powers aren't strong enough. Rhino then begins to strangle Connor so Garrett stabs him in the eye with a sharp instrument, allowing Connor to finally finish him off with an electric bullet to the head. Meanwhile, Marcus threatens Nia by asking her to heal him, but as Nia gets closer, she gets his gun. Garrett then uses his powers to kill Marcus and take Nia's gun, which he gives to Connor and tells him to take whatever he wants. Once there, Nia reveals that she has a wound similar to Connor's the day before, explaining that her body absorbs the wound she heals. If she cures Mary, she will have cancer. Connor ignores this and takes Nia to the hospital at gunpoint, but as Nia is about to heal Mary, Connor notices she is in pain and stops her. When Mary woke up, Connor held her hand and watched her die. Later, Park and Davis found Marcus' body in the garage. Connor gives Nia his truck so she can escape. He then turns himself into the police and is sent to prison. After such mayhem, the government banned any use of power in the city. Five years later, Targ needed money to fund his younger sister Pavina's education. He sells psych to Garrett and one afternoon, 
Tarek approaches him to show him that he is practicing his cloaking power in the hope that it might give him a raise. However, Garrett refused and a gang member pushed Tarek away. Next, Garrett went to see a presentation by Kingston Police Sergeant who showed the public the newest K-9s. Lately people have been complaining about how aggressive the Guardians are and how much power they kill, so here's a friendly solution. A K-9 will jump on a person if they see they have a weapon, but they will immediately back away if the person raises their hands. Pavina also watched the presentation and her eyes lit up when she looked at the robot dog. That night, Garrett sent one of his men to deposit the bribe money in the usual hiding place. Tark followed him and after the guy left, he took the money for himself. At that moment, Kingston arrives so Tarek rushes to hide while Kingston becomes angry over the missing money. Kingston forces his men to search the area so Tarek uses his powers to hide, but an officer still recognizes the shape of his face and Tarek has to run away. At the same time, Pavina noticed that her brother had not returned and went to look for him. Officers sent a K-9 after Tarek and a desperate chase ensued. After several escapes, Tarek hides in an abandoned building and when K-9 approaches, he uses his powers to make himself look like a pile of fabric. Luckily, the K-9 scanner didn't pick up on the difference and the robot soon left, allowing Tarek to escape. However, as Tarek was about to return home, a K-9 found him. Terrified, Tarek raised his hand and the dog sat down, but the police saw him through the robot's camera and injected Tarek with a special poison to kill powers. Tarek writhed in pain until he died just as Pavina arrived to witness everything. She screams her brother's name and the dog chases her, but as she screams the camera fades to black. I end the morning at the police station. Kingston checks the K-9 that was disassembled last night, but the IT guy doesn't know what happened. His only clue is the last second of the recording, which includes a young girl. Several agents were immediately dispatched to find her. Meanwhile, Connor is shown to be out of prison and has a very boring job as a janitor at the community center without using his powers. When he went out to take out the trash, he discovered that the lock on the warehouse behind him was broken. He checked inside and found a scared Pavina, who was throwing trash at him. Connor swears he won't hurt her and manages to get her inside, where her boss Mina comforts her and shares what happened. Suddenly, an officer starts banging on the door so Mina goes to distract him while Connor escapes with Pavina through the back door. As Mina argues with the police and closes the door in his face, Connor and Pavina find the road blocked by other police and take a different route, but end up appearing on security cameras. Connor takes Pavina back to his apartment and they learn that the police say Tarek died of a drug overdose. Pavina becomes angry as she screams the lie, causing her powers to go crazy and begin to affect the television. Connor has to turn it off before something explodes. Soon, Pavina picked up a radio signal and announced that the police were approaching. Soon after, police entered the building with a K-9, only to find Connor's apartment empty. He and Pavina hid in another apartment and as soon as the coast was clear they tried to escape. Unfortunately, when they reached the outside, two guardians jumped from the drone and land in front of them. Connor immediately used his electric powers to take down a robot, but he hadn't done it in so long that it left him very weak. A voice from the drone tells them they are being captured, causing Pavina to reactivate her powers and cause all of the drone systems to fail so she can escape with Connor. With no other choice, Connor meets with Garrett and asks him to do him a favor. Connor wants new identification, money, and a safe place for one of his secret friends, but Garrett immediately reveals that he knows everything about Pavina and what happened to the police. He explains that he has a deal with Kingston, the police receive money from his sales and in return the gang can operate freely. Connor uses this to keep the community safe and pay sponsors properly, that way they won't be tracked. Connor then agrees to help her clear all the fake papers, but he also points out that Pavina needs to forget what she saw, or the police will never leave them alone. At first, Pavina refuses, but Connor explains that this is their only chance of survival. Next, the group goes to meet a woman with the power to erase people's memories. When Pavina touched her hand, the woman's eyes turned black and she began manipulating Pavina's mind. At first, she only erases the memory of Tarek's death, but soon she begins to move on to all other memories related to Tarek. Pavina immediately protests as this is not what they agreed upon and Connor tries to stop the process, but the gang holds him back while it is explained to him that any lingering thoughts any return on Tarek could bring the others back, which is why it should absolutely happen. Deleted. Pavina, furious, refuses to lose the memory of her beloved brother and begins to fight against the woman's power to stop her. At the same time, a gang member with flame powers tries to burn Connor alive, but he hits the guy in the arm and causes him to shoot a pipe into the ceiling. Now water falls everywhere and Connor uses it as a conductor to zap the group with his electricity. Connor and Pavina then go to see Mina, who agrees to take them to her car. Her license plate was found by a police drone and they became suspicious of how she treated the police before, so they sent someone after her. Soon, Mina's car is surrounded by Garrett and his gang and when they try to take another route, the car gets stuck in a pile of rocks under the bridge. Garrett used his telepathic powers to smash the car window, then the group members pulled the group out of the car quite violently. Nearby, two guards record everything for the police, who want it done quickly before anyone else witnesses another case of police brutality. Garrett is ordered to shoot Pavina, but Connor gets between them and Garrett 
is unable to shoot him. Time is running out and the guards open fire, quickly killing a group of gang members while everyone runs for cover. Garrett was shot, seriously injuring him, and another blow hit Mina, who simply removed the bullet with her hand because her strength was her thick skin. A gang member tries to save one of his friends, but is also killed. Garrett then uses his powers to grab a mirror from the car, but the guardians shoot him down as well. Desperate, he tells Connor that they have no choice but to work together to survive. Mina agrees and tells Connor and Pavina to leave while she goes out to create a distraction and Garrett brings rocks as a shield. The two men and Pavina ran toward Garrett's car and escaped while Mina continued to be shot over and over again until she fell. When Kingston arrived, Mina was still alive thanks to her thick skin, but she didn't have much longer to live. Kingston offers her medical treatment in exchange for information, but Mina responds by spitting in his face before dying. In the evening, the trio arrives at the abandoned orphanage where Garrett grew up. Connor and Pavina hold Garrett back so he can use his powers to remove the bullet from his chest while having a snack. Connor told Pavina that they should go to the border, but Pavina was tired of running. The next morning, they are found by Davis, who explains that Kingston cannot be taken down because he has too much power within the force. Pavina explains that she can use her abilities to access the recording of all the corruption cases and broadcast it on national television. She just needs one of the K-9s. Davis remembers that Kingston has his own robot dog at home, so the group comes up with a plan to approach it. Hours later, Garrett and Connor showed up at Kingston's house as police union representatives wanting to show their support for the sergeant. Kingston's wife, Stephanie, knew nothing about her husband's shady dealings and happily let them in. When Kingston arrived, Pavina watched from inside the car as he left his K-9 in the garage. As soon as he entered, he understood that it was a trap, but he couldn't say anything in front of Stephanie and let those people interview him as if they were old friends. Meanwhile, Pavina used her powers to open the garage door and approach the dog. As soon as she touches him, the K-9 activates and alerts the police computer specialist who tries to call Kingston to warn him. When the cell phone rings, Garrett cleverly uses his powers to push a knife across the table, silently warning Kingston not to answer the call. The technician then tested the home phone so Stephanie went to take the call while Connor pretended to go to the bathroom. As soon as they are alone, Kingston reveals that he also has telekinetic powers and tries to throw the knife at Garrett, who immediately blocks it. The two use their powers against each other, but because Kingston Kingston hasn't used them in a while, he loses the practice and Garrett wins easily, dropping the knife. In the garage, Connor guides a very scared Pavina so she can focus on her powers and get what they need. Stephanie then returns and tells Kingston that he has an emergency alert about his dog, so Garrett decides to leave while playing nice. Kingston then ran to his garage and discovered that his K-9 was missing so he ordered all of his men to search for it. The trio leaves with the robot in the car and Pavina confirms that she can view all the recordings. Garrett takes them to a safe apartment and promises them a computer they can use, but instead they find a group of gang members because Garrett betrays them again. Enraged, Connor tries to attack Garrett who knocks him out first with his powers. It turns out Garrett wants this information to take control of Kingston and continue running the area and the psych business. Garrett then used his strength to rip off the dog's head and gave it to a gang member, telling him to hold it with his life. When Kingston and his men arrive, Garrett meets them outside and shows them the robot's body, threatening to reveal the information if his men are not left alone. However, Kingston responded by stabbing Garrett and handcuffing him before sending his men and another K-9 into the building. In the apartment, the group notices that journalists have arrived in the vicinity and Pavina points out that they can still carry out her plan, so Connor convinces the guy to give him the robot head. At that moment, a K-9 unlocks locks the door and the police rush and so Connor tries to shoot tasers at them, but unfortunately their shields have been modified to absorb it. The police immediately opened fire, so Connor ran away with Pavina while the gang members fought back using various powers, including telekinesis and flames that created a fire barrier between them and police. Unfortunately, the K-9 quickly put out the fire and the police attacked again, causing a fierce fight. With their great strength and teamwork, they take down the police one by one, but when a man with super strength tries to attack Kingston, he stops him with his own strength and shot him in the head. Meanwhile, Connor and Pavina reach the hallway, where they are approached by AK-9. Connor continued to shoot electricity at him, but it wasn't enough to stop him, and the robot pinned him to the ground in an attempt to inject him with poison. Connor desperately threw all his strength at the dog, causing his power to disappear. When the emergency lights activate, Connor sees K-9 frozen and thinks he has won, but the robot suddenly moves and begins injecting him with drugs. As the poison slowly entered Connor's body, Pavina arrived and focused until she was able to take control of the robot, making it stop. Connor didn't die, but he was weakened by the small amount of poison he received. At that moment, the IT employee 
appeared in the elevator with another K9, so Pavina brought the first one into battle, easily destroying the newcomer with just one blow. Terrified, the police opened fire, but the bullets had no effect and the K9 pinned him to the ground, cutting off his fingers to disarm him. When Connor finally stood up, he discovered a stray bullet had hit Pavina and she was bleeding profusely. As other police officers entered the apartment and subdued the gang members, Connor picked Pavina up and carried her outside, but he was too weak to continue and placed the girl on the ground. At that moment, they saw journalists nearby and Connor asked them to come closer. The police tried to send another K-9 after him, but Garrett used his telekinetic abilities to turn him into a useless metal ball. Suddenly, Davis finally arrives and pushes all the police back, allowing reporters to approach the duo. With the last of his energy, Pavina touches both the robot's head and the camera to broadcast Kingston's corruption to the entire country. At home, Stephanie is devastated when she discovers the truth about her husband. Kingston exited the building and attempted to shoot Pavina, but Garrett restrained his hands and held him at gunpoint, giving Davis time to reach Kingston and arrest him. Their goal achieved, Connor and Pavina passed out. Three months later, Kingston was investigated and journalists began to trace the corruption to the highest positions. Garrett is in prison watching the news contentedly. Connor returns to his job as a janitor and opens a youth center for all the children in the neighborhood, including Pavina who recovers and thanks him for everything. Thank you for watching. See you on the next video.